Now, in the question number 116, for the seed germination, we have to select which hormone is involved, right? So, the right option here is gibberellic acid. Now, what is the role of the gibberellins in the seed germination? Now, gibberellins, they result in the formation of enzymes. Yes, they stimulate the synthesis of enzyme, hydrolytic enzymes which work on the complex organic substances. That is, they work on the complex food and after the breakdown, they convert them into the simpler one, right? It means if we talk about the carbohydrate, if we talk about the starch, after the breakdown of the starch, there is formation of the glucose. Now, this glucose, it can easily enter the respiratory pathway. After this breakdown, after its breakdown, there is formation of energy ATP and this ATP is utilized for the seed germination. It means the hormone which has the ability to mobilize the stored food by forming the digestive enzymes which can cause the breakdown of the complex food that is gibberellic acid. Now coming to the question number 170. Now here we have to talk about the secondary productivity. Now if we say primary productivity, it means the production of the organic matter at the producer level. Secondary productivity is production of organic matter at the consumer's level. So, it means for the question number 117, the right option is 2. Primary productivity is for the producer's level and secondary it is for the consumer levels. So, now let us proceed to the next question that is 118 here. Question number 118. The colonies of recombinant bacteria appear white in contrast to blue colonies of non-recombinant because of. Now, in this case, if the gene of interest has been inserted in the galactosidase gene then that gene becomes insertionally inactive and if that gene is inactive it will not convert galactose into a blue colored compound so in this case the answer would be the insertional inactivation of alpha galactosidase in the recombinant so since this gene is not working so that x gal or that galactose derivative will remain white and not be converted into a blue colored compound so the answer is 2 now moving on to the next one 119 now in this, which of the following Bt crops is being grown in India by the farmers? This is a direct question and the answer is cotton. So answer is 1. So let's move on to 120. In the question number 120, we have to see how the interfascicular cambium is formed. Now let's see, this is transfer section of dicot stem, right? And you know that in the dicot stem, the vascular bundles, they are arranged in the form of the ring. So, let us say these are the vascular bundles, right? Between the vascular bundles, there is formation of, there is presence of a cambium. This cambium, it is known as intrafascicular cambium, the cambium which is present in the vascular bundle that is intrafascicular cambium. Now, this cambium it is primary in origin. Now, between the two vascular bundle now the tissue which is present here that is medullary rays. These rays they are parenchymatous in nature. Now, at the mature stages, what happen? These parenchymata cells, they regain the cell division capacity. Yes, the permanent cells, they regain the cell division capacity and convert it into the meristem. So, it means here between the vascular bundles, there is also formation of cambium, right? 
there is also formation of meristem and this meristem which is formed now between the vascular bundles it is known as interfascicular cambium. Now, this cambium is formed at the later stages. So, that is why it is secondary in origin and you know that the intra and interfascicular cambium they will join resulting in the formation of the vascular cambium right. So, it means the interfascicular cambium it is formed from the parenchymatous cells which are associated with the medullary rays means for this question right option is 4. So, now let us proceed to the question number 121. 